Welcome to Truth and Consequences with Doug Papa, episode number 17 for September 27, 2020. I am continuing my discussion of the formal statement of charges that were filed against Las Vegas Justice Court Judge Melanie Andrus Tobiasen by the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline and the response and motion to dismiss the charges that were filed by Judge Tobiasen's attorneys. Update. On Friday, September 25th, Tobiasen's attorneys filed a writ with the Supreme Court of Nevada asking the court to dismiss the allegations. For the record, I am the only investigative journalist in Las Vegas that has consistently for over two years been investigating and reporting on Judge Tobiasen and or the unsolved 2016 Las Vegas Land Kaufman double homicide. Information that I have provided in the over 25 stories that I have authored on this topic that were published by the Baltimore Post Examiner and on my new forum for my independent investigative journalism, this podcast series, have been based on interviews, court documents, emails, and text messages from various sources. There is no hearsay when you have a recording of someone's voice, emails, text messages, and or other documented forms of electronic communication sent by an individual. It is what it is, or as two attorneys said recently in a court document, if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, it's a duck. There never has been any misconstruing or fabrication of facts or circumstances in anything I have done in any of my investigations. Keep in mind, police officers and FBI agents have been known to lie and fabricate evidence when it suits their purpose or to support an agenda. That has been well documented for decades. The Las Vegas media continue to ignore the big picture, the overall. As I reported in podcast number 15, the Las Vegas Metro Police homicide detective, Jared Grimmett, according to a court motion, stated he never provided Judge Tobias in any confidential information pertaining to the unsolved 2016 Land Kaufman double homicide. You heard in several podcasts in Judge Tobias's own words and in subsequent emails the complete opposite. Why isn't the Las Vegas media reporting on any of this? There is no doubt in my mind that Detective Grimmett did indeed provide the information to Tobias as she claimed, and I'll have more on that in a future podcast. I would like to hear Grimmett's testimony under oath at a hearing deny what Judge Tobias has said. It boils down to this. Either a sitting judge is a liar or a homicide detective is a liar. That's the story, Las Vegas media. Report it. I have over 40 years of investigative experience and damn near 400 articles credited to my name. I authored over 135 articles on the October 1, 2017 Las Vegas massacre that were published by the Baltimore Post Examiner more than any other single investigative journalist in the country. I broke many stories on the massacre and was applauded for my work by several attorneys who represented the victims. Many of my stories were reprinted by other media outlets. There is a reporter in Las Vegas who, for reasons of her own, has an obvious grudge against me and recently published an article falsely quoting, excuse me, falsely quoting me. I will deal with that in a future podcast in which I will include audio excerpts from the recording I have of the conversation she referred to in her article. When I conducted my May 7, 2018 on-the-record recorded interview with Judge Tobiasen, she never once asked to stop the recording and go off the record. It was all on the record. I covered this in a previous podcast, but I just want to reiterate, excuse me, reiterate it again here. During that exclusive May 2018 interview, Judge Tobiasen, as I have previously reported, stated that she had provided information concerning alleged police corruption within the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department to FBI Special Agent Kevin White of the Las Vegas Division. For two years, I have sent media requests to the FBI Las Vegas Division and or the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Nevada asking for comment concerning Kevin White and Judge Tobiasen. As I expected, nothing was heard. Now, because of the Judicial Commission's investigation that was done on Tobiasen, We have a statement by FBI Special Agent Kevin White that was made to Adam Wignanski, the investigator for the commission, who interviewed White earlier this year and which is mentioned in the motion by Judge Tobiasen's attorneys. In addition, the motion states that during the investigation, it was discovered that Tobiasen did indeed have contact with the FBI, which corroborates in part Tobiasen's statements to me during the May 28th interview with her. On this matter, the thermometer just went up on Judge Tobiasen's veracity, at least with me on this part. For the record, I have never disbelieved what Tobiasen said about contacting White, nor when she stated that she provided information to Las Vegas Metro Police Vice Detectives that was never followed up on. Judge Tobiasen, in my opinion, engaged in some questionable behavior that very well may get, may get her removed from the bench. 
With that being said, it doesn't discount to me what she said in that interview. She knew she was being recorded, yet she still admitted to some questionable behavior. Based on my experience, that is more often than not a sign of someone who is telling the truth. During my interview with Judge Tobiason, she told me that FBI Special Agent Kevin White had provided to her a burner cell phone for security reasons. Shortly, you will hear audio excerpts from my interview with Judge Tobiason from that May 2018 interview with her. In her attorney's motions, they refer to excerpts from Kevin White's interview with Mr. Wignanski concerning burner phones. Keep in mind, we don't have these statements and exhibits that are referred to in the motion by Tobiason's attorneys. They are sealed by the court and therefore not available to the public at this time. As I said in a previous podcast, the commission turned over to Tobiason and her counsel the entire investigative file, which includes statements, transcripts, audio recordings, and other documents obtained from the commission's investigation. In podcast number three, I broke the story that according to documents filed with the Nevada Supreme Court, the Judicial Commission asserts that by including in its pleading allegations of criminal conduct by Judge Tobiason, including involvement in purported murder plots. The commission also stated that there is evidence of recent witness intimidation and threats made by an unknown person or persons, which greatly concerns the commission and may adversely affect any potential hearing. Apparently, there is much more going on here which could possibly end up with some serious criminal charges against Judge Tobiason. Getting removed from the bench may be the least of our concerns, should Tobiason be criminally charged. As far as I know, any criminal investigation would be conducted by the Las Vegas Metro Police Intelligence Section and possibly also jointly with the FBI. Any evidence obtained that was obtained by the Commission's investigator relating to criminal allegations I don't believe would have been turned over to Tobiason or a counsel, as it would compromise any possible criminal investigation. The Judicial Commission is not a law enforcement agency and therefore has no jurisdiction in conducting a criminal investigation into a judge. Review podcast number three for more information on that. I am the only one who has reported on that to this date. According to the motion to dismiss filed by Tobiason's attorneys, the commission's investigator identifies 48 contacts with the FBI through Tobiason's burner phone and 130 contacts with the FBI from Tobiason's personal cell phone. The motion goes on to say that the commission's investigator asked FBI Special Agent Kevin White if Tobiason provided information to the FBI public corruption, excuse me, the FBI's public corruption squad relative to the murder in question, and the special agent could not comment. Special Agent White was asked whether he could not comment because there was an ongoing investigation, and White confirmed, quote, I can tell you I can't comment on an ongoing investigation, unquote. Special Agent Vinita Pandey similarly advised that she could not talk about an active investigation. The motion also states that the investigator's report notes over 175 texts, text messages exchanges that Tobiason had with the FBI. This is very interesting for several reasons. We have Tobiason in contact with the FBI 48 times on a burner phone, 130 times on a personal phone, in addition to 175 text messages with the FBI. No doubt, Judge Tobiason was indeed in contact with the FBI, just like she told me during the 2018 interview. Now, according to two FBI agents who were interviewed earlier this year, White and Pandy, uh, excuse me, yes, White and Agent Pandy, they both stated they can't comment on an ongoing investigation. The big question now is what investigation? Who are they investigating? Judge Tobiason, police corruption, or something else? Now is a good time to play the audio excerpts from my interview with Judge Tobiason. Just to note a few things to get into context. Keep in mind that this interview was conducted in May of 2018. I will put a few things into context after I play the audio excerpts. Listen to what Judge Tobiason says, keeping in mind at the time of this interview, she was, as she is today, a sitting judge on the Las Vegas Justice Court. Did you ever contact anybody from the FBI and tell them what's going on? We're getting there. Okay. We're getting there. Okay. Okay. Yes. The answer to your question is yes. And when Metro found out that I was talking to the FBI, um, oh, what's his name? God damn it. He just retired. 
hold off. I, um, you, cause if I'm off track, then anyway, he was, yes, I did. And I spoke to somebody for a lengthy period of time and we spoke on burner phones cause we were so afraid that the other FBI agents in Metro would find out Ooh. that we were talking because he knew that there were people that he worked with at his agency that if they found out we were talking, he'd be shut down. Why was that? So Metro finds out that I'm talking to the FBI and a deputy chief contacts the head of the Las Vegas field office who then calls in the agent that I'm talking to and tells him he's not to talk to me anymore, that I'm a problem and that Metro's concerned that I'm going to go public with my story. Yes, that's what happened. So who was yes, who, who is, who is the deputy? Who is the deputy chief? I can't remember his name right now, and he just retired. He it's, retired because he had a DUI that Joe Lombardo covered up. You're not talking about Todd Fasulo. That's who I'm talking about. Yes, I am. Who now works for Murad, uh, Steve Wynn. Who, all, who now works for the Wynn, and guess what? The head of the local field office of the FBI is about to go work there, too, because Todd Fasulo got him a job there. That's the same head of the local FBI office who told his agent not to speak to me anymore. And then I believe that they probably found out that they that we were still talking and he got kicked out of the public integrity unit and sent to the opiate squad. What was the FBI agent's name you were talking to? What was his name? I, well, I'll tell you his name, but you know, I'm trying still to protect him even though he's not, he won't talk to me now. So now I don't have anybody to talk to. I can't go to Metro, I can't go to the FBI. Do you know, do you have any information that that FBI investigation, the alleged FBI investigation, because I did a story on it that it started by George Knapp, do you really think there is an FBI investigation going on since 2014 or you think it's just a bunch of nonsense? Well, according to Kevin White, there is, and according to him, there's going to be, well, I shouldn't say that, but listen, everybody in the world is saying there's going to be indictment. Right. But they started saying they were coming out in February, then March, then April, now it's May, and I don't see any fucking indictment. And everybody keeps saying, don't worry, once the indictments come out, you're going to be okay. You'll be safe. I go, I should be safe now. I go, but I'm not, because I can't call the police, and I can't call the FBI. I go, where the fuck do I go if something goes wrong? Okay, I now, go, who do I call? now, according to rumor, um, some of the people who may be indicted are, of course, Bauman, the former vice cop, um, from what I heard. Lieutenant Karen Hughes retired. Uh, Bias, Bias, and maybe some people from criminal intelligence and other people from vice that are still on there. That's that's what I'm hearing. But again, that's based on rumor. Listen, I don't have, I do not have information on who might be indicted. I mean, I have theories. Um, I have suggestions that it's going to be way bigger than anybody thinks it's going to be, and that it's going to be way more people than anybody realizes it's going to be. But by the time they finally get the indictments out, I may be in prison for bullshit charges <laughs> from Joe Lombardo. Just to get this on the record, um, right now, the the subject of the, when you say the investigation, we're talking about the FBI investigation. Right, the FBI investigation reference to the search warrant they executed in 2014 on Molly Mall's house. Correct. Let me ask you a question. Um, just maybe you know, maybe yeah. you know, maybe you don't know. Do you think the reason why, um, because that's a little puzzling to me, is why the FBI guy was told not to talk to you? because of the of the uh, ongoing FBI corruption probe and thought maybe you may jeopardize that investigation no. somehow? No. No. They told him specifically, I am a problem for Metro. Metro's afraid I'm going to go public. And it would make Metro look bad. No, it had nothing to do with them being concerned that it would compromise the investigation. I was giving them information that bolstered their investigation. These guys are covering for Metro, just like Metro's covering for Metro. But okay, what? Okay, I'm, I'm trying to find the connection here, though. Why would the FBI 
be covering for Metro during a federal corruption probe. Mm -hmm. that, well, that's a part that is, doesn't make any sense. This is a different, this is different. This is a t completely different investigation. The thing I'm involved in, although it's tied to Molly Mall, resulted in three murders that are not being investigated, that are not part of that investigation. They ignored me for a year and a half, and it resulted in three murders. And I was giving that information to the FBI in hopes that at some point they might investigate that as well, whether it had a connection to the ongoing investigation or it resulted in an additional investigation. I was providing them information on my situation in hopes that they would investigate it and they shut their their agent down and told him he was to stand down and not to speak to me anymore this was they were not investigating this they were not going to take the information on it and he was not to speak to me anymore do do, do you think by talking to that agent that aside from the stuff that you just told me about the murders do you think there was an active investigation with the FBI going on on the other on Molly Ball? Yes. Okay, but they didn't want to hear anything I mean, about. They told me there was. But they, they didn't don't want. Okay. Listen, they're still protecting them. They're going to try to, you know, listen. Bossman is gone from the department. Karen Hughes is gone from the department. Albia should be, but they're still. Metro was able to call the, I don't care why, it doesn't matter why. Metro finds out that a judge is giving information to the FBI and is able to call the FBI and tell their agents not to get information from the judge anymore about the prostitution activities that she reported to Vice that were ignored and resulted in three murders. It doesn't matter why, the fact it happened is the story. Okay. Who cares what their motivation is? It's disgusting. Why would they not want me to give information to the FBI about this? Because it makes them look really fucking bad. And they know that the fact that they outed me got two people killed. They weren't the two people they were trying to get killed, me and my daughter. But it got two people killed. How did, let me ask I'll you, tell you, Joe does not want this story out there. Okay, let me ask you a question. How did you make contact with this FBI agent that you originally talked to? Did he approach you or you approached him? I approached him and it was the most bizarre. I had dinner with a lady who runs a group called Sesame. And it's a group that, fought, you know, that keeps track of teachers who are accused of or convicted of having inappropriate relationships with students and then just get sent to a different jurisdiction and right. get their teaching licenses kind of like priests right and during the, and we had you know we had a different issue that we were dealing with and i had dinner with her and i tell her this story and she says i have a friend who's an fbi agent who is who works on human trafficking and political or public integrity. She goes, he, he probably really want to talk to you. And I said, I'll talk to him. I said, I've t thought about going to the FBI for a while now. I said, but I don't know exactly how to go about doing that. And so she sent him a text and she said, I'm having dinner with somebody who would like to talk to you. They have a story for you. And he said to her, give her my number. And I, that's how we made contact. Okay. Um, uh, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to give you my opinion here for a second, not for what it's worth anything. But, you know, I got a little bit of background because of stuff that I was involved in with the police department years ago when the FBI was doing mm -hmm. investigation. Now, I'm, I'm just saying what it sounds like to me, and I don't know, I'm just giving you my opinion here, is that... Okay. The reason why that FBI agent was told to stop talking to you 
because of the ongoing corruption investigation the FBI's yeah. got against Metro, and they didn't want anything at that point to disrupt it. I'm, yeah. You know, no, because it, you know what I'm saying. Metro yeah. does not control the FBI. That's that's I'm telling you. I'm telling you, they control the at the local office. In fact, that FBI agent said to me, if I was in any other field office in the country. And a local police department called my boss and were upset about me talking to somebody, they would tell him to go get fucked. He said, this is the only field office in the entire country where the local police department can call and complain and get the agent shut up. The police said that to me. So with all due respect, you're wrong on this one. The FBI agent personally said that he was, he then gave me a burner phone that he bought because he didn't want one in my name. We then spoke on burner phones. And now Joe Lombardo, one of his reasons for suggesting I'm involved in drug trafficking right. is because he knows I have burner phones. And I said to the attorney, I go, really? I go, let me tell you something. I never had a burner phone in my life until I talked to the FBI. I go, the only reason I've ever had a burner phone is so that Metro and the FBI wouldn't know I was talking to an FBI agent. That's why I have a burner phone. Now, one week, one week after they found out I was talking to the FBI, they did a press conference where they said Shane Valentine is no longer a person of interest in this murder. That was one year and three weeks after the murder happened. And up until the minute they found out I was talking to the FBI, Shane was a suspect. The minute they found out I was talking to the FBI, they do a press conference saying he's not a suspect. The problem is they don't know that I know what evidence they have. Chances are they've destroyed it by now. Go ahead. Here's what I can tell you. They have now taken it away from the field office here. Well, that's because what, of what happened. That's what I was saying. It should, this, they, this should be coming right out of headquarters. That's where the, the public integrity well, section works out of. It wasn't originally. It was being investigated here. They took it away from them because of what happened. When was that? Do you know? Them only within the last few months. And this is information I get from people who really aren't supposed to be talking to me. Right. But they tell me. And now I got Lombardo threatening to file charges against me because, you know, I have the nerve to speak out. And what do you think he's going to charge you with? If you don't, if you don't, if you're not, if you're not doing nothing, he, he can't, he can't, he can't, he can't make up know. charges. I, he told my attorney he was going to charge me with interfering with an investigation because there were certain conversations apparently I've had with people where I said you probably shouldn't talk to certain detectives because they're dirty. And my attorney said, um, first of all, you're not doing an investigation. We've even been told that the case is cold. Second of all, it's true. Why would you suggest to somebody to talk to a detective that you know is dirty? Right. So, I mean, he's just trying to scare me. When, when they told and, you, you know, when they told you, Melanie, that um, the case was taken out of the local office, did they tell you where it was going? Washington. Okay, because that's where I figured it should have been from the start. Um, well, it wasn't there from the start, I can assure you. Because when I was involved with all that stuff years ago back in the police department, it was the public integrity section at a headquarters that gives the authority to do these investigations in town. I'm, but, uh, but I'm just telling you, it, it wasn't. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, I know that it doesn't make sense. It didn't make sense to me. I didn't understand how somebody at Metro could call the FBI and get me basically blackballed so I can't talk to an FBI agent who was very interested in my story and knew that I was telling the truth. I don't understand that either. That does sound a little um, mysterious to me. Um, it's real mysterious. I, I've never heard of that. And I, I said I've, I've done a lot of 
different things in the well, past 40 years this. where the FBI agent that I was talking to right is so he will not talk to me he's so afraid to talk to me because he knows he'll get fired or he'll get I mean it's that it's listen he's as mind blown as I am he's afraid to talk on his phone his work phone because he doesn't trust the other agents he works with I'm not crazy, okay? No, I don't think you're crazy. He's told me, I mean, he and I talked at length. We would meet at churches and libraries so we could talk. He was terrified to be seen with me in public because he knew they wouldn't want me talking to him. Right. Once he knew what I, once he knew my story, he knew what would happen if they found out that we were talking. And he was right. He would absolutely, he told me what would happen if they found out we were talking, they found out we were talking, and exactly what he said would happen, happened. So, you know, whether it makes sense to you or not, what it should say to you is this is bigger than I ever, you know, this is stuff that they really, 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 really don't want to become public. That's what it should say to you, is that this shit is huge. One of the last times I spoke to this agent before he quit calling me, and I will tell you this, he's gotten me and he's gotten messages to me to let me know that I'm okay, that, you know, he knows what's going on, he knows I'm scared, and, you know, he's managed to get me messages, but he also got me the message that, if they ask him if he's talked to me, he doesn't want to have to lie. No, he's got to tell him the truth. He's got to tell him the truth. So and then, then that's you. Why he, that, and then that's you. That's why he's refusing to talk to me because he doesn't want, you know. And but, but what does that tell you? That he's afraid of them finding. You know what I mean? Well, like, I, I don't, I'm not. I'm not too sure that when. The way it's being relayed may be the way it is. I mean, I believe you when you said that um, if Metro contacted the FBI and said, "Hey, let me, let me tell you this right now, Metro, I don't care, I don't care what you believe, man. I'm telling you, Metro is not going to tell the FBI to knock off a federal corruption probe. That is just a bunch of nonsense." No, 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 no. You misunderstood me. I did not say that they said to stop the probe. I'm telling you, they did not want me giving this agent the additional information that I have. This thing with me is a completely separate but huge issue for Metro because it involves judges and police officers and fire chief and human trafficking and the allowing of it to happen to our children, the ignoring of it when somebody brought it to their attention repeatedly, and then the murders. Now, where I didn't go, see there's so much information that, hold on, I think my son's coming downstairs and I will not have, I will not discuss this in front of my kids anymore because no. it just, my daughter is scared. She had an incident at her house the other night. She's not convinced it was unrelated and the police had to come a lady was trying to kick in her door was screaming for help but you know was crazy and the police came and you know what my daughter was afraid of what my daughter's afraid because the police know what that she's my daughter and where she lives mm -hmm. she's more afraid of the police knowing where she lives than the crazy lady who was trying to kick in her door what i'm saying go ahead is that the Sulo called the head right. of the Las Vegas field office right. and advised them that this guy was talking to me and he was then set, told to stop talking to me by the head of the local field office. Right. That is part of the FBI <laughs> corruption investigation. I think it's gone way... But Go. listen... It wasn't until I gave this information to him, and I didn't ever give it to him in an official capacity. Well, this is the way it works. They have already talked to cops who were targets, and I believe some of those cops 
have cooperate, cooperated with the FBI and the what? The what? That's true. There's no doubt about it. They have talked to cops. Right. They have talked to, you know, of course they have. Right. So I think they've with... talked to all kinds of people. To clarify a few things that you just heard on that interview, Todd Fasulo was the assistant sheriff, the number three man under Clark County Sheriff Joe Lombardo, who runs the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Fasulo did in fact retire from the police department and went to work at Wynn Resorts in Las Vegas in 2018 as a security executive, just as Justice Tobiasen has stated. The FBI official Tobiasen refers to in that interview was in fact Patrick Brodsky, the former assistant special agent in charge of the FBI Las Vegas Division. At the time referred to by Tobiasen, Brodsky was the number two man at the Las Vegas Division working directly under special agent in charge Aaron Rouse. And yes, just as Tobiasen stated in the interview, Patrick Brodsky did in fact retire from the FBI in 2018 and then went to work at Wynn Resorts in May 2018 as a security executive. Is this a case of quid pro quo? I did several stories on this starting in 2018. In 2019, I made telephone contact with Todd Fasulo at Wynn Las Vegas, and he told me that there was no truth to the story and that I was going down a gopher hole. The person identified in the interview as Molly Mall is hip-hop music producer and longtime Las Vegas pimp Jamal Rashid. The FBI Las Vegas Division raided Rashid's home in September 2014 and did not ask Las Vegas Metro Police to assist them. Allegations were that Rashid was paying off corrupt vice cops at Metro so the police could target rival pimps of Rashid's. I wrote several stories on this, and it was well covered by George Knapp of KLAS-TV 8 News Now's I-Team in Las Vegas who broke the story. Last year, United States Attorney for the District of Nevada, Nicholas Trutanich, after a multi-million dollar five-plus year FBI investigation into Rashid's 12-year continuing criminal enterprise into sex trafficking operation, gave Rashid a sweetheart deal of a pre-indictment plea deal of just one count of operating a business for the illegal purpose of prostitution. Rashid was not charged as a sex trafficker, and no Las Vegas Metro police officers have been charged. United States Attorney Trutanich told the media in 2019 that the case is closed. Why Rashid was given that plea deal has been the subject of controversy with many in Las Vegas, including some Las Vegas Metro police officers who have spoken to me and expressed their outrage that some corrupt cops escaped, excuse me, escaped arrest. And lastly, if Judge Tobiasen's attorneys want to clear her name, why are they stalling? Go directly to the public hearing so all the evidence on both sides can be presented. Typical lawyer stall tactics filing motions upon motions. Since the beginning of the year, Judge Tobiasen has changed attorneys three times. She currently has two different law firms representing her. That's it for this episode. Thanks for listening, folks. Next episode, number 18, will knock your socks off. Stay tuned to Truth and Consequences with Doug Parker on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you.